This video is going to be the first part in a two or three part segment where we look at the histology of the digestive system. And so what we're going to be doing is learning to differentiate the four major segments of the digestive tract, which in order are the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the colon, also called the large intestine. And we will frequently be coming back to this flow chart, which will help us learn the unique features of each segment that help us differentiate them. The first segment we're going to look at is the esophagus. Personally, I think this is the easiest one to identify because it's the only one whose epithelial tissue is stratified squamous epithelium. And so that's the first thing you can do if you're going to follow the flow chart. You ask yourself, how many epithelial layers are there? If there's one layer, it's going to be any one of these three down here, either the colon, stomach, or small intestine. But if it has many layers, and they're clearly stratified squamous epithelium, you really only have one choice, at least of these four, and that's the esophagus. Okay? And the other things that we're going to see in the esophagus is that in the submucosal layer, there are esophageal glands. Sometimes you'll see these. And also, the esophagus is the only one whose outermost layer is the adventitia. All the other ones have what's called serosa. So that might not make a lot of sense right now, but let's go ahead and look at a sample micrograph image of the esophagus. Now this is very zoomed out, but what's nice about this image is you can see the various layers, right? So right here in the center, this is the lumen. This would actually be where the food passes through. So we're actually looking at a cross section of the esophagus. Like the other regions of the digestive tract, the esophagus is gonna have four major layers. All right. So if we look at the layer that directly faces the lumen, this is the superficial layer. This is our mucosal layer. So this area that I'm tracing with my mouse, it looks a little bit darker than the regions deeper to it. This is the mucosa. And the mucosa has three subparts. The part that directly faces the lumen is actually going to be our stratified squamous epithelium. And as I mentioned, the esophagus is the only one that contains this epithelium. If we go deep to the stratified squamous epithelium, we're going to have a layer that's called the lamina propria. Okay? So this region right here, directly outside this darker region, which is the epithelium, this lighter region, this would actually be the lamina propria. Okay? And then just deep to that, we have a slightly darker region that's called the muscularis mucosa. In fact, what we're going to see is that all the segments of the digestive tract are going to have three regions like this. The only difference is that the other three are not going to have stratified squamous epithelium, but they're all going to have a lamina propria and a muscularis mucosa, which is a muscle layer of smooth muscle that is specific to the mucosa. Right? If we go deep to the mucosa, we have a much lighter staining region, typically lighter staining, called the submucosa. And in the esophagus, the submucosa is going to contain esophageal glands. If we go deep to the submucosa, we're going to have muscular layers. And in the esophagus, there are two muscular layers, which collectively are called the muscularis externa, okay? or sometimes muscularis propria. The layer of smooth muscle that's superficial or closest to the lumen, this is actually the circular layer or circular muscularis externa. And the one deeper to that, furthest from the lumen, that is the longitudinal layer or longitudinal muscularis externa. Okay. These are both layers of smooth muscle, and what you should notice is that, generally speaking, the fibers are going to be oriented perpendicular to one another. Okay. It's not exact, but you can clearly see two layers of smooth muscle here, okay. and collectively these two make up the muscularis externa. And deep to the muscularis externa, we're going to have adventitia, which is not seen in this image right here. The adventitia is the deepest layer, and it's going to be a layer of dense irregular connective tissue. Right, um, Interspersed with the, within the adventitia, we may see some adipocytes, some patches of adipose tissue, but the vast majority of it is dense irregular connective tissue. The esophagus is the only one that contains adventitia. The other three segments are going to contain what's called serosa, which is actually composed of a different tissue. So let's now take a look at the interactive image. All right, so this right here is a very zoomed out uh, segment of the esophagus. It's actually a longitudinal section. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in right here, and what we're going to see is the epithelium. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit. Remember, the epithelium of the mucosa is going to be stratified squamous. And hopefully at this magnification, you can see that we've got stratified squamous clearly. So this right here, from right here to the surface, of course, down here is the lumen. This is actually the stratified squamous epithelium of the mucosa. All right? This darker region right here that kind of 
forms the uh, deep border of the epithelium. These are actually the mitotically active cells. Remember, stratified squamous epithelium has a layer of mitotically active cells. The analogous layer in the skin would be the stratum base cell. Right? If we go deep to that, this region right here, from about right here to the border of the epithelium, this would actually be the lamina propria. Okay? And then if we go deep to that, this layer in here, and it's difficult to tell exactly where it cuts off, but this would be about where the muscularis mucosa would be. All right? What I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit, and we can actually get, take a better look at the different regions. Right? So I'm going to go over here a little bit to the uh, right. I'm going to point out these things right here. So these things are actually esophageal glands. You can see that these this tissue looks glandular in nature. Sometimes when you see these little white circles, that's indicative of glandular tissue. We can see these things arranged in circles. Okay? Here's a circle right here. Here's another one. These are esophageal glands. If you remember what I said, the esophageal glands are found in the submucosa. So sometimes the submucosa is a little bit difficult to find, uh, but this region clearly, from probably about right here where this white streak is, down to right here, this would actually be the submucosal region. And so if you see esophageal glands, you know you're looking at the submucosa, right? So again, superficial to that, this would probably be muscularis mucosa, superficial to that, lamina propria, and then stratified squamous epithelium at the lumen, right? Now if we find again the submucosal region, which is right here, if we go deep to that, we're then gonna have the muscular region, that is muscularis externa. Now, let's zoom out a little bit more, and we'll actually clearly be able to see two regions of muscle. So here is the superficial one right here. The superficial one, which is always closer to the lumen, this is the circular layer. Okay? So right here, this is my circular layer of smooth muscle. And then deep to that, this layer would be the longitudinal layer. And I don't have to make a guess which one's which, because the circular one is always closer to the lumen. It's always superficial. The longitudinal one is always further from the lumen, okay? And the esophagus only has two muscular layers in the muscularis externa. And so if we go deep to that, out here, this would actually be my adventitia, right? Now, if we zoom in on the adventitia, let's actually find a segment of it. So the adventitia is composed of dense, irregular connective tissue mostly. And what we can see if we zoom in close enough, we can see that these fibers are oriented in all sorts of directions. If this were dense, regular connective tissue, all the fibers would be oriented in the same direction. We'd see, we'd, we'd see consistent striations. However, opposite directions, all directions, whatever you want to call it, this is clearly dense, irregular connective tissue. But periodically, you'll see these little white circles right here. What are these? So here's a huge cluster of these cells. What are these? Well, these are adipocytes. These are fat cells. Remember that adipocytes do not stain because this large white region of these cells is the lipid vacuole containing triglycerides, and those don't really stain. If we actually look at this one in particular right here, we can actually see its nucleus positioned toward the plasma membrane because remember with adipocytes or adipose tissue, uh, the nucleus is pushed all the way to the edge. But actually finding these adipocytes, this is something that's characteristic of the adventitia, not the serosa that we're actually going to see in other tissues. Okay, so let's kind of zoom out and do a quick recap of what we can see here. So from this region, let's actually zoom in a little bit more, probably from about right here where my mouse is tracing to the lumen, this region is the mucosal layer. And again, we can see the stratified squamous epithelium. From about right here to this white streak, really up into the muscle, okay, this is going to be my submucosal region because I can see esophageal glands over here as we talked about. And then we have very thick layers of smooth muscle. This is the circular layer, longitudinal layer. Collectively, they are the muscularis externa. And then deep to that, we of course have the adventitia, right? Now, the one major thing I wanna say that's gonna give away that you've got the esophagus is the stratified squamous epithelium. If you can recognize this in the tissue, you know you've got the esophagus because out of the four regions of the digestive tract that we're going to look at, this is the only one that has this type of tissue. All right. So hopefully this video made sense and you understand a little bit about the histology of the esophagus. In the next video, we're actually going to cover 
the stomach, and the small intestine, so make sure to join us there. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.